All right, so here is how you make the best panfish float rig in the world. Go to ifishtackle.com and get matching floats and jigs. What do I mean by matching? The capacity of the float should be the same as the weight of the jig. In other words, if the jig says one gram, the capacity of the float should say one gram too. If the jig says 1.25 gram, the capacity of the float should say 1.25 gram too. And so on. If the jig says 1.5 gram, the float should say 1.5 gram too. By the way, the 1.5 gram is, uh, float is not available right now, but it will be in July. But this video will stay out in the open for a long time. So that's why I put here the 1.5 uh, gram as well. But once you have a matching jig and float, you can start the rigging and the entire rigging is just two steps. Let's do them. When you get your float from the shop, it will come in this PVC tubing. The way you open it is actually not from the top and try to shake it out. It's not gonna shake out because it actually has place inside of this platform, inside of this base here to prevent it from hitting up and down and breaking the antenna. So the way to even take it out of the PVC is to pull the bottom base gently out. And then we pull the base out. And this is your iFish Classic Float. This part here is called stem. This is called body. This is called antenna and this is called an eye okay now we're ready to rig get your line from your rod and reel so and run the line this is very fat line i just chose something that will be easy for you guys to see run it through the metal eye and then when you get here to the two pieces of silicone tubing, do you see these two pieces of silicone tubing? Remove the two pieces of silicone tubing and put them on the line. Now let me try not to drop this on the carpet. I already dropped one on the carpet. Never to be recovered. You see now I put the two pieces of silicone tubing on the line and now we're gonna put the float in the silicone tubing it's the silicone tubing that fixes the float on the line you don't need two of these pieces oh this line is very fat so it's gonna you're not going to need two, but I'm going to put the second one just to demonstrate to you. You can tell this video is kind of spontaneous. I didn't know it will be so difficult to thread with this 0 0.35 millimeter carp fishing line. But okay. I have the two pieces of tubing. The float is now installed. So it is the eye here that is holding it on top and the two pieces of tubing that are holding it right here now you can slide the float higher or lower depending on how deep you want to fish this is the first step this is how we installed the float on the line the next step is get your matching jig where did i put my jig so this was a one gram float this is a one gram jig and just tie it using your knot. I use uni knot. You guys can use whatever. I'm not going to go into knots right here uh, in, in this video. 
you guys can use whatever knot you want. Okay, here is the jig. The jig is tight. So now we have a float and a line going straight to a jig and we don't have anything else. And you know what? This is it. This is it. The best float panfish rig in the world is complete. That's all it takes. There is a float and a jig and nothing else. And I know, I know what you're thinking, Victor, brother, why is it that I am not amazed? I'm seeing the float, I'm seeing the jig. Why is it that I am not amazed? Well, you should be amazed. Let's talk about a couple of things. The first thing that I want to talk about is swivels. No swivels in the float rigs, okay? First of all, the capacity of this float is one gram. If you buy a swivel from United States, it will have a big ass. It will weigh like 0.3 grams. The gram, the jig weighs one gram. Total weight will be 1.3 gram. You, you're gonna sink the float. So it doesn't even work. But if you buy your swivels from Japan, they are so tiny that the additional weight can be negligible and you can make it work. You can put a Japanese swivel if you really want, but you shouldn't. Why? Because it's ridiculous. Do you want somebody to see you and think that you are being ridiculous? No, you don't. No, you don't. Then don't put swivels on the float rigs, okay? Swivels addressed. Next step. This rig has no split shots of any kind. Ten years I've been watching fishing videos on YouTube. Ten years. And not just pen fishing, cat fishing, bass fishing, any fishing. People are pinching these lead split shots on the line. And for 10 years, I didn't see one person just one time say, man, I'm a little concerned about crimping this thin, uh, this uh, metal thing on my very thin uh, leader line. Doesn't this crimping on my line doesn't this damage and weaken my line? My line is already very thin. It's only two pounds. Hmm. What if I crimp this split shot and now it's only one pound or even half a pound? Never did one person get concerned about crimping lead. Don't do that with your teeth, folks. It's, it's very bad. You don't need you don't need split shots on your line even if you remove them you create a flat spot in the line your line is compromised here it's weakened permanently one of the beauties of this rig is no split shots are necessary okay isn't this isn't there beauty in simplicity if if i have any subscribers with engineering background only engineers let me tell you engineers appreciate simplicity like nobody else for them this is like a, a rembrandt picture just a float and a jig and still everything perfectly tuned when you drop it in the water the water level will be right here when the fish pulls, it will submerge the float right away. It will never feel any resistance. You have 45 millimeters of antenna and body sticking out for visibility. Just a float and a jig, and yet everything is perfect. Let's address a couple of other things. Okay. Now, here is my actual 
float fishing rig. I have gotten at least 30, 50 questions over the last few years about Victor, can you show us your float fishing rig? It's the same that I just showed you a minute ago, but with two tiny changes. What is the first change? The first change is there is a small knot here now, and now we have leader line. You can tell the leader line is thinner and more difficult to see. Let's stop and talk a little bit about leader line. As far as panfish go in normal fishing conditions, if you use, this is, let me show you, this is my, pretty much the only fishing line that I use. Verivas, Twitch Master, you'd be surprised. Don't, don't go spend your money on this line. I use it because I love this color. I don't know, there's something about this color makes me soft and happy. I just like the color. You don't need to spend money on float fishing line. I'll get back to that in a second. But if you, if this is the color of your main line, and this is the diameter of your main line, 0 0.148 millimeter, okay? Moving from this to fluorocarbon leader will not give you I will not give you extra many maybe a few here and there but this will be insignificant again i'm talking about panfish only in normal fishing conditions all of this nonsense about fluorocarbon being invisible and this and that how did people catch fish for thousands of years before we discovered fluorocarbon the reason I put a leader is that if you tie the jig directly to the main line and then you snag, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You are losing everything. You are losing at minimum the float, but all too often you're also going to lose 30 or 40 feet of line. This is the reason I put leaders on everything. Why? Because the knot creates a weakness. You know, it's kind of ironic because nobody likes a weakness, right? Why would you intentionally create a weakness? I want to have a weakness. I want, if I snag, to lose only from here to here, and recover my precious float. Forget about the float, you know, I, I before I did this, you know, a few times I snagged and lost 30 feet of line. Let me tell you what bothered me personally is I just imagined 30 feet of nasty line now hanging from this tree in my beloved lake forever. If, if this doesn't bother you, you, you have no heart. This line just hanging and dangling there forever. This is the main reason I recommend leaders. If your main line is four pounds and you put a three pound leader, oh, you're golden. Even if it's not the knot, your leader is a little bit thinner. So you break one or two feet of line and you salvage the rest and you don't litter the lake. The clip is very similar story. First of all, notice how when you suspend my jigs under a float, they are perfectly horizontal. Okay, notice that. But when you are fishing under a float and you have waves, move this up and down. If the jig is freely oscillating at the neck, it allows the jig to change the angle and move more freely and naturally. Okay, instead of moving like this, up and down like this, this doesn't seem natural. How can an animal, a worm that is sitting horizontal, move like this without going head up first? Here is how it would go up and down with the clip head first, head first always. 
that's how it, it will move with the clip, right? Without the clip, it will move up and down like this. Now, is this gonna catch you more fish? Again, for the last time, I don't think so. Maybe one fish here, one fish there. I'm just telling you, I do it because it does something for me. Just like the leader, it gives me extra satisfaction. Hard to explain. But you definitely don't need clips to catch fish uh, with the perfect eye fish float rig. One last thing and I'm going to let you go. For mainline, for float fishing, what you want is monofilament or nylon with diameter from 0.14 millimeter on the low end to 0.20 millimeter on the high end. My recommendation is do not buy expensive line for float fishing. Now for twitching, if you ask me, going the rivers for twitching is kind of, I don't know. I don't know what else you can buy to get the same fishing experience for twitching. For swim bait, kind of in the middle. But for float fishing, you don't need expensive fishing line. But if you're buying cheap fishing line, and these are ca casking is the, your only option. Look at these diameters. If I buy casting for float fishing, I would buy two pounds, if it even has two pounds, because two pounds will be 0 0.15, 0 0.16 millimeter. There's a very popular SOS fishing line from a trout magnet that trout magnet says that's a two pound line but it has 0 0.16 millimeter diameter, 0 0.16. Do you know I have from the rivers with 0 0.16, not here, but I have six pound line with the same 0 0.16, but the SOS says only two pounds. By the way, I actually recommend using that SOS. The line is good. The line is good, that me, don't get me wrong, but get the right diameter so you can cast. So you can actually use the two pound SOS line for float fishing because it's fat enough. It's 0 0.16 millimeter. It's right in the middle of my range. I use this one, which is 0 0.15 millimeter, 0 0.148. And yeah, that's it for float fishing. You do not need expensive line because 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, that's such a thick line for catching bluegill and crappie. You have so much extra breaking strength that there is no justification to, you know, to, to buy these exotic lines unless you like me or you like the color. Um, that's, that, that's a separate reason. But yeah, folks, this is this. I've been waiting two years, just two years to make this video. This is the iFish float rig. Let me drop it down a little bit to show it to you one more time. It's just a float and a jig. That's it. There is, there is beauty in simplicity. Put your leader. I approve of that. It, it keeps our lakes clean. And if you fish in clear water, it can give you a couple extra fish. Now the clips are really pushing it. But those of you that are crazy like me, you can check the clips too. Fish with them, without them. Let me know if you think they catch every uh, extra fish. One guy actually agreed with me. It's funny. One guy told me, Victor, I agree with you. I don't think they catch extra fish. But just like you, uh, they give me some kind of uh, strange satisfaction. And I think I'm going to use them from now on. So there is uh, there is people who think like that. But either way, this is, folks, the iFish Panfish float rig.